Okay, Gary Philly, and welcome. Today we are in John chapter 3. We're going to be taking a look at verse 31, stopping just about the middle before we start verse 32. Here is our rubric, everything that we're looking for as we go through this text. Let's go ahead and get started. Ho anothen ercomenos epano panton estin, ho on ectes geis, ectes geis estin, kai ectes geis la lei, ho ectu oranu ercomenos apano panton estin. And that's as far as we're going to make it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our very first verb right there with ercomenos. We've seen this form many times before. The mu epsilon nu right there tells us that this is a middle passive in form participle. The OS, Omicron sigma, sorry, is our marker for the case. That's going to be nominative, singular, and masculine. Erko tells us the meaning of this verb. This verb is its self-deponent. It's erkomai as its first principal part. So present tense off the present stem, deponent, and participle. So then we take a look back before that we have an article there. So the article is going to be going with our participle. Looking ahead in this clause, we don't have any nouns. So this stands alone. It's going to be a substantive with that article. Now, on Othen, we've seen that before. It appeared when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus about um, well, being born from above. So we already know that on Othen means from above. Um, I, this is something that I missed last time looking up this word. It can also mean from the beginning. <laughs> And then the other option, again, or a new. So these are less common meanings. So, the coming, you might say the one coming from above, from the beginning, again, or a new. Apano, apano is another adverb of location, it means above over or more than. And then that works in tandem with a genitive of comparison, which we have right here with the Omicron nu right there. Since there's no accent over this, not Omicron nu, Omega nu, since there's no accent over the Omega here, we know that the gender has to be masculine or neuter. It cannot be feminine. So with all feminine plural genitives in the ad adjective words, the, it's going to have a circumflex over the omega no matter where the accent would otherwise fall on the word. For masculine and neuter, it only has an accent over the omega if the accent naturally falls on the ultima. So then that would be why masculine and neuter are the only options right there. So estin is our verb. We've seen that many times before. No need to parse. Just is above all over all, or more than all. And then we just have to understand in the English that this all is plural. Okay, now we want to take a look at the context of this, figure out which of these makes the most sense, and then which of these makes the most sense. So we have the one coming from above, from the beginning, again, or anew. So right away it should be pretty clear that again and anew doesn't make much sense since this Jesus is incarnated 30 something years ago. So he's not really coming again. His, this is the first time, first a very long 30 year span of time that he's been here, unless you count uh, pre-incarnate uh, appearances of Jesus as the angel of the Lord or something like that. But that, that I think would be reading way too much into this little word right here. So I think again or anew doesn't make any sense. Jesus hasn't left yet. so from above or from the beginning are our only options. The one coming from the beginning, I'm not sure why we would want that meaning in there. Uh, yes, Jesus is from the beginning of the world. He's from before the beginning of the world, uh, before time even. Not that that makes any sense at all. But in, in, in the context of uh, John the Baptist talking right here, or maybe we moved on a different speaker, but I'm pretty sure it's still John the Baptist, it, it doesn't make much sense for him to say coming from the beginning no it, from above makes the most sense because 
John the Baptist is talking about the Messiah who was sent from heaven to earth. So that is the one that I'm going to go with. These other three do not fit context. Now moving on to the Pano. The one coming from above is above all. The one coming from above is over all. Or the one coming from above is more than all. More than automatically doesn't make any sense. So over or above. Above could have the same idea as over, technically. You could just mean, I don't know how to put that really, but overall would have an idea of authority. Above all would have the same idea of authority. So either of these two, I think, work. Just more than does not work. Okay, let's move on. Ha on. On comes from on ontos. This is the present active participle of amy. So nominative singular masculine with that article right there. It's uh, this, this participle forms exactly like the present, uh, not present, just the active participle forms on a normal verb, which is why <laughs> it just looks like that. Had the aspiration mark been facing the other way, then we would know that this is actually the genitive plural or the relative pronoun, but nope, it's unaspirated, therefore it's the participle. Present, active, and participle. Another article with this one. So we've got colon or semicolon. The one being. Or if we wanted to translate it in a way that sounds a little bit better in English, we could treat this participial phrase as a relative clause. Who is, is our other option there. Is because present tense in the participle right there. Ecte, so you get a prepositional phrase right there. Ek takes the genitive. We know it's got an articulated object. Gase, eta sigma right there. Eta sigma right there. Tell us that this is a genitive singular and feminine noun. Ek is a new prepositional phrase. Also going to be taking the genitive. The one being or who is from the earth or I suppose we could say the land, the dirt. Dirt, maybe not. But we could say earth as in the substance. So I, yeah, that's that's just equivalent to dirt. Whatever. Okay. Ek tes gase again. Estin. No need to reparse this. From the earth, land lowercase earth, estin, again don't need to parse, is chi, and no need to parse, from the earth, land, dirty stuff, la le. All right, epsilon iota right there is our ending for this verb. This is la leo. It is a E, an epsilon contract verb. So our ending right here is actually epsilon, epsilon, iota. They just smushed together. Now since epsilon, iota is a diphthong and it's a long, a, a, a long value diphthong, that means it's going to pull the accent to the right. So normally accents on verbs, they want to go as far to the left as possible. And in this uncontracted form, la, le would be la, le, a means we have three possible syllables. That means that the action can move the furthest possible to the right, to the antepenultimate, right, to the left, to the antepenult. But this uh, this diphthong here wants to pull it over, so then it would move over to the penult. Oh, my fingers, yeah, fingers are barely busy. Antepenult, penult, ultima. So starts out at the antepenult. The diphthong here yanks it over to the penult, and then the penult and the ultima this epsilon, epsilon, iota right there, contract into just epsilon, iota, and the accent has to stay put, which is why we have a circumflex right there. It's pretty cool stuff. So, that being said, this is a third singular present tense, active, and it is indicative, and it just means to speak or to say. He speaks, or talks. I think 
say would be another option, but there we go. So that ends that clause. The one being from the earth is from the earth, and he speaks or he talks from the earth. Pol ek, prepositional phrase, plus the genitive. Tu uranu, singular, and this is masculine. Very right there, so it closes off. The one is going to be the same construction. From the heaven or sky, Hercomenos, seen that before. Et pano panton estin, we've seen all of these, no need to parse them again, although I didn't mark that adverb. Oops. Now we don't need to parse it. Above or over. All is. Note that we've got the brackets around this phrase. This means that probably the oldest versions of this text that scholars have available do not include it, but there's a lot of evidence supporting it, a lot of quotes outside of the Bible supporting its inclusion, or it might be that they just question its validity there because it's a repetition of that right there. It's almost the same phrase just without the on oath and with a different prepositional phrase with the same idea behind it. Then they might be thinking that a scribe in copying this thought, oh, this belongs here too, and just copying it in, or absent-mindedly added that in, skipping a line or something like that. So I'm going to treat it as if it belongs there, because frankly, without that there, this is an incomplete statement. The one coming from the sky is what, the, what what's the rest of the clause. So something belongs here, and this seems reasonable. Then I suppose that could be another reason why they left it in. All right, now let's take a look at this in its own context. The one coming from above, above or over all, is, is above or over all. Who is from the earth, is from the earth. No duh. <laughs> Sorry. And he speaks from the earth. The one coming from the heaven is over all is above all. And I think, again, the idea would be has authority over, or could be, is, is better than all, maybe? I don't know. That, that might be reading a bit much into it. Well, there you go. This is verse 31 of chapter 3, starting off our final paragraph. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope taking a look at this has been helpful for you, and I hope that you have a good day. Farewell. Hey, you not asleep yet? That's okay. I've got tons of other videos that are equally sleep-inducing. Check them out. Alternatively, you could take a look at this video over here.